It is good to be back, guys. Welcome to my so-called podcast, so-called vlog. This is just my happy place to vent and uh, share my experience, and I hope it proves to be valuable for you as well because I like to try and tie in things that are kind of self-reflection, things I'm learning, story time. You know the vibes um, if you've been here for a while. Um, Today is no different, man. We're talking about the track I have out right now called Anything and Everything. We have a music video for it that we're dropping on Friday, and I am super excited. I've always wanted to do video, but video is expensive. It's one of the most expensive pieces of art out there because, you know, shooting uh, can cost anywhere between three to five hundred dollars even upwards of a thousand, depending on how crazy the scenes are. Editing can cost hundreds of more dollars. And at the end of that, if you're a very picky person like I am, sometimes you're not always happy with the result. It becomes more and more difficult with the more money you spend uh, to really get the ability to do what a lot of people need in this art form of video, which is practice. You need to be able to see yourself in front of a camera a lot, you need to see different angles and shots and it just really isn't an art form that lends itself for someone to be able to really be a beginner and practice. <laughs> so you kind of wind up um, sticking to your phone and using your phone. Now on the flip side, the phone is amazing. Phones can shoot in 4K, for, uh, phones can shoot cinematic, phones have many lenses. And today you don't need the latest phone to create video content. With a little bit of creativity, with a little bit of knowledge, you can use your iPhone and put together a heck of a combo to make it seem as if you shot with uh, the, the expensive cameras. It can be difficult because if you're an established artist, it can kind of hurt, you know, I don't want to say credibility as much as just the quality of your brand. But if your audience really isn't that big and you're um, kind of self-aware of broadcasting your journey to your fans, which they probably care about more anyway, because the only people that are following you are super fans of yours, uh, then you're willing to take risks and broadcast those risks to the public. And that was my situation. As of last year, I dropped, I think, four or five music videos. Um, we dropped Bliss. Um, we dropped Voyager. We dropped Strange. And I think there's one more that I'm missing along with some kind of trailer footage, some challenges, some rap challenges. And uh, those were all shot with the iPhone. Um, at first, we shot them just with the iPhone, put it in it on 1080p. Then we moved up to shooting on uh, 4K at you know 24 frames. Then we were messing with 1080p at 60 frames and 4K at 60, messing with all that. Then I learned about LUTs and color grading and how that can impact the video quality. <clears throat> fast forward to now and we're learning different ways to point the camera at the artist and hunting for different locations in the valley that I think are cool that might be fun to shoot and uh, I've had a great friend of mine helping me out along the way donating his time um, and he's just been awesome because I can just bounce ideas we're both like have no business being outside with a camera, but he's the homie, so, and I need to make visuals, so we want to learn, and uh, he's been patient and uh, kind enough to shoot video content for me. I've kind of directed his steps. He's naturally gotten better and formed a little routine, and we just have a bond in that space where we're just shooting video content and seeing what can happen as we grow in knowledge and learn from different mistakes, and so now we're at uh, the next video in the progression of the art journey with video, which is anything, everything. As I said before, it drops Friday. And I just wanted to make a vlog so that I have video content to put on my Instagram uh, and YouTube channel. Kind of just forecasting what to expect, things that went into the record. I want to talk about two things today. The song itself and then uh, I've got some notes here because I just haven't had time to really script in my mind where I want to go with this. So I just wrote down all my thoughts and we're going to roll with that. We're going to talk about the song itself. And then we're also going to talk about my experience with the video. And I, I always say I want these videos to be quick. If I could finish this video in 10 minutes, that would be awesome. I'm looking at the deal right now. We got five minutes left. So hopefully I can speed through these, but 
in true conscience fashion, we're going to run 5, 10, 15 minutes over as usual, probably. So anyways, what is this song about? The song's called Anything and Everything. In a nutshell, this song is about relationship. The unique thing about a Christian is the Christian life is not one where relationships are just two ways. Um, there is a third person, a third more important person involved in the relationship, and that is the Lord. And the Christian seeks to honor the Lord in his relationships, not just friendships, but in intimate relationships, uh, the marriage, um, the spouse. Um, and it's a special relationship. It's unlike any other relationship. Um, it is created by God. It is sustained by God. God gets all the glory. Uh, but when his glory is on display in marriage, you see longevity, you see patience, you see the fruits of the spirit. You see tons of things in the relationship that despite things that both the spouses fall short of, as well as external circumstances, God is able to sustain and for them to thrive primarily in a joy and a peace in the Lord, which sits above all other temporary satisfactions. But even at a horizontal level, marriage is amazing. I can speak to that. I've been married for, this will be my 10 year anniversary in August, and I've been with my wife for almost 15 years. And I can truly say that when I pursued my wife, I said to the Lord, Lord, I know I've given some of my relationships to you, but I want to be all in with this. I want to glorify you by serving this person with you in mind and to say, what, what does a woman of God look like? What does a man of God look like? How can we seek you above all things? How can we grow in that relationship? And we've really formed a bond putting God above all things. A little bit of backstory with that. I like to talk about intimacy, specifically in marriage, and how it can be shown in so many things other than what the world would broadcast intimacy as, which is sex, um, primarily. There are so many things about a, a relationship that can be intimate other than sex, uh, I was going to say sexuality, other than sex, and there are in many, many cases, far more beautiful, far more long lasting. And um, this song really just wants to capture the intimacy of a God seeking relationship that sits above the marriage um, in a way that cultivates true intimacy, pure intimacy, God fearing, God honoring clean, holy, righteous intimacy um, that God has designed in the marriage and upholding his glory and seeking and serving and growing with him above that for the purpose of serving one another in marriage and broadcasting our marriage to the world for the world to see this love that goes far beyond these two people, but it actually comes from God above. And this relationship isn't just between two people, but three and um, it's a new love that no one's ever seen before. And I love trying to describe it in music. And so um, I'm just going to look at some of my notes here. Um, zooming out of the relationship and seeing the big picture, God, giving him praise and seeing that he's doing all of the work. So this song is praise and worship to God. It, it's, you know, I might need some time so I can think, all right. So I'm talking to my spouse and saying, hold up, I need to reflect on the fact that God's at the root of all of this and we should give him glory and praise. He is so good because if what we're having right here is good, it's because he's good and he's pouring his love onto us and we're exchanging that love and it's blessing us. We're reaping the blessings of something God has cultivated and produced in us. And so we're taking time out to just give him praise. Um, and so it's talking about the greater love, which impacts this spousal love, um, basically saying, hold on for a second. We've got so much to look forward to. Let's just take this moment to give God 
um, his rightful credit for everything beautiful that this marriage is. Um, this love overlooks the past. Um, this love is the fruits of the spirit. It's, it's self-controlled. It's patient. It's kind. Um, it, it, it's a love that just overwrites all previous notions of what love could have been. Um, I'm speaking in metaphor because it's often hard to describe in a one-liner. Um, this greater love is something we're still growing in, something we're still learning about, how to live as a man of God and a woman of God, and what does marriage look like, and what happens when we fall short, and how do we seek God, how do we wait on God, how do we, how do we actively wait on God, how do we enjoy Him, um, what to do in different circumstances. When one person falls short and we expect something, how do we treat each other? This, this whole thing, God is just steering in our hearts and bringing us to a place that brings Him glory, and it's just a beautiful thing. Um, I have here, in Him we can do anything and everything, in the highs and even in the lows. So this isn't a type of love where when it's good, it's good, and when it's bad, it's bad. It's like when it's bad, he's still the greater hope, so it's good. It's hopeful. It, it, you know, it, it, it looks beyond. Um, things can't just things can get you down, but they can't wreck you because your hope is, is set on the creator of the universe, the sustainer of this thing. And in our own power, we're useless without him. Um, yeah, um, I think people need to hear about real, um, romance and intimacy in music. And I find that sometimes Christians can get, um, exegetical, meaning, you know, they're kind of just like reading straight from the text. <clears throat> and that's not a bad thing, by the way. It's amazing when we hear God's word from him about what marriage looks like and what love is because it informs our hearts which are wicked however um we live we are living beings and so what i think is important as well um i don't want to talk about the hierarchy of what's important because you know i do believe that the word of god should have its proper hierarchy in our hearts and even in our music and in our thought life and things like that there's also the component of being a human being, and I also love to see, okay, the person who's reciting these truths and thinking about these truths, what is that practically looking like in their life, and what areas are they falling short, what areas are they seeing fruit, uh, be fruitful? So I like to r talk about, okay, these are the truths I'm seeking. These are the truths I'm reflecting on. We're not going to leave scripture out of the music, but let's also say and testify to what's actually happening happening in the human life because that's what's glorious. When you actually tell the story of what's happening, you begin to see how little you are and how big God is. But if you only always talk about how big God is, but there's no context, there's no testimony that people can bear witness to. Um, and so I think you're missing out on a certain degree of impact. You're just kind of could be just waving scripture and not really showing how it's impacting your life. I think the testimony and testifying to what God is actually doing in your life is powerful. We have that. That's how we proclaim who God is because he changed a wretch like me. So if you don't include that part, I think you're just missing out. So anyway, I like to broadcast um, what real romance and intimacy can look like when God steps into a marriage and it's a different kind of love. Um, in this, in the song itself, I wanted to create moments. This song actually changes up three different times. It has like a kind of R and B section. Then it has kind of like a stadium chant. And then it kind of has this majestic cerebral, change up that just completely deviates from the calm peaceful to the disruptive and uneasy and in the middle sits this kind of unity of like triumphant celebration of like wow this greater love um i wanted to let the music um 
make the energy and feeling of this song, meaning I wanted to use less words. I wanted words to simply direct and guide and let the actual melodics and drums and sequencing create a mood that then the words could simply inform and then just get out of the way and let the music be the music. Um, I used simple words to guide the message and really let the change-ups and music um, create and evoke emotion, but it's not just evoking emotion for the sake of emotion. It's being guided by the words. So I do want to make that clear point. There's a lot of negative space in this song. I think there's no need for filler in this song. I wanted it to be very direct, use as little words as possible to, to speak on the subject matter, let the music really move you, and then allow you to have the negative space to feel, to just feel in this song. Um, I also changed the track up a lot because I wanted people to feel, you know, I love change-ups in music because they kind of give you a second and third chance to reimagine the song as something else. You know, what started off as kind of this traditional R&B, soft, peaceful, calm, serene track was reversed and then deconstructed because it's like, oh, well, let's hear it done this way. Oh, and let's hear it done that way. And you kind of just sandwich it together and you almost get one song in three different colors. Um, and I love to do that with the song. And it just creates a really cool vibe. I love to think of my music nowadays as experiences, um, not just, you know, 16 bar chorus, 16 bar chorus. I think we're done with that era um, in a lot of regards in hip hop. People are trying to make experiences, no matter how short or long the song is, having attention to detail to every line. And if you take it line by line, you allow yourself to be free of changing something musically or changing something with your words, changing an articulation, and that creates lots of moments because you're spending more attention to detail on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. You're not just writing a 16 and with the only objective of, well, all this has to rhyme or all of this has to be sang. It's a much more complex way of art making. It's very much present and in the moment. Now, let's move on to the music video real quick. I see I've hit 18 minutes, like I said, typical conscience fashion. Let's talk about the music video. Um, I try to really stick to the Arizona landscapes when I do my music videos. Um, I love the openness, the flatness of Arizona. You know, this flat valley that's just surrounded by different pockets of mountains and landscape. And um, there's even some cool architecture, but I like the minimalist approach to my music. I really like to evoke a sense of God's earth. And um, so I like open plains. I like um, mountains. I like being able to see the sun and the open sky. I like less buildings, not a lot of cars, things like that. So, you know, when you look at my angles and my cinematography and the color palettes. I like to go more natural in terms of the landscape and backdrops that I'm shooting in, but I like to use color grades to then spice it up and kind of reimagine that nature in a more futuristic or vintage um, coloration. And so, you know, there's a lot of Arizona landscape, and I don't think I'll ever get away from that, at least for right now. Um, a funny story about this music video is I had two or three locations that I wrote a treatment for. Okay, we're shooting here at this time. I want these angles in these shots. And then when I actually dropped the little guy on the Google Maps to like look at the landscape the day before the event, um, it sucked because I noticed there was a gate around the entire location. And we were shooting right at around 5 to 7 p.m. So, you know, kind of golden hour time. And uh, I didn't have time to see um, there, the gate had an opening somewhere or whatever like that. So, we, you know, long story short, at the end of writing this treatment for three different locations and finding out all of them had gates around them or some kind of hurdle, I last minute scrapped it and had to start looking close in my neighborhood because we had no time to be searching around for locations. And thankfully, the two or three locations I had in mind were right down the street from my house. And we were able to get just some of the coolest 
um, shots and, and that created this music video. And I'm super happy that we scrapped those locations, you know, looking back. Um, I'm much more happy with these locations because we got creative and it kind of had the setting and vibe I was going for anyway, but it was definitely all God, um, <laughs> being that we had to pretty much scrap our entire idea. Um, let's see, capturing a calm with no background, but God's creation. We talked about that. A new place free of clutter, distraction, and noise. You know, I'll again, just to reiterate with a kind of minimalist approach, I think less is more. When there's less going on in the picture, it kind of frees your brain up to just have its own creative thoughts and not have the bias of being guided by that car or that rusty building or whatever. It's just the less that's on the picture, the more you can really feel the music, appreciate the little things going on, and just be free to roam with your thoughts as you interact with the music. Um... This video was shot with an iPhone. I shot it in 4K uh, on an iPhone on the 13, I believe, 13 Pro Max. Um, and uh, again, it was shot in 4K at 24 frames a second. Um, and I think you'll be surprised by it. It looks semi-professional, you know. I'm not the best editor in the world. I have almost no experience. I kind of went to YouTube University last minute to learn some things on the transitions and but I think we did an amazing job and the picture that's captured from the iPhone's amazing. Whether you have a gimbal or just, you know, running gun shooting, I think you can pull off a lot of creative shots, you know, even just the cheap tripods where you can set your phone in it and spin it around. Um you know, you can create some amazing shots uh, for almost no money. And uh, you certainly have no excuses if you have an iPhone to just kind of get out there and start filming. I think people are too concerned with how good they look. Um, there's a lot of people that don't have audience sizes that justify how insecure they are with showcasing and kind of stepping out into that artist journey with video. We all have cell phones. There's just no reason why we don't shoot some sort of visuals and see ourselves look terrible and slowly build upon that. We want to just kind of skip to greatness. Um, and I know a lot of people just simply can't afford professional music videos. So it makes all the more sense to get out there now and just start, you know, not all of us are going to be making our own music videos in five, 10 years. Um, but we definitely need to start if we don't have a resource. So it was just cool. As you watch this video, just remember it was all shot on a cell phone um, with a, just a piece of software for editing. And uh, I used some tricks and tips in the software such as color grading with LUTs, um, some simple transitions, some fast slowdown type of speed changes. But that's really it. You know, it's just anyone with a video editing software could have made the video that I made is, is what I'm trying to encourage you guys with. Oh, and we met these dope kids. You know, these kids came by on a quad when we were out and uh, they, they were like, are you guys filming a TikTok? And um, it was cool because we were like, nah, you know, we're filming a music video. Would you guys like to be in it? And, you know, they, of course, they agreed and they got to be in a music video. So you'll see the kids on the quads in the music video. They were just kind of running by and they kept stopping over where we were filming. So we kind of just interacted with them, gave them a little cameo in the video, which actually was pretty dope. It was a vibe for sure. And um, I like inspiring kids, man. When they see that, it thinks it gives them something else productive to think about. Like, wow, that guy's you know, an old man, but he's still creating, you know, wow, this art thing, what's it about? Maybe I could try that. I want to rap one day. I want to sing one day. I want to shoot video one day. There's so many art forms going on in the music video process that I think kids can gravitate towards. And so it was just a dope interaction. Um, yeah, you know, th that's really it, guys. Just wanted to talk a little bit again about um, some of the thoughts that went behind the music as well as the music video. I hope it was encouraging to you guys. 
Um, let me know if you've shot any music videos or where you're at in your musical journey. If you have any questions about, you know, the cameras or creative things you can do to step up your game, you know, send me a DM or put a comment on YouTube to let me know that you are watching and what I might be able to assist you with. I'm more than happy to answer all your guys' questions. But remember, I am dropping clips from the music video as well as clips from this episode in IG and on um YouTube shorts all week leading up to the release and anything everything the music video does officially drop on Friday at noon so stay tuned for that remember you can always find everything at consciencehiphop.com that's c-o-n-s-c-i-e-n-c-e uh, hiphop.com and that's a nice mobilized one page um, site where you can see anything that I have going on, which is typically my my vlogs that you see here, my merchandise that constantly comes out with new, new merchandise you guys can purchase um, or just even look at, um, my posts from Instagram, and, um, and then the music, where you can find all the music. And there's some consultation stuff, but that's rarely what I advertise. That's kind of more private client stuff that I've been doing for a long time. But nonetheless... Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel so you know when it drops. And let me know, man, when it comes out. I want to hear you guys' thoughts on it. You guys have a wonderful night. Be blessed. Peace.